things that a lot of preppers advocate for is forming a community. Those people who are like-minded, those people who share you ideas and whatnot. However, I'm here to tell you there, that is a little harder to do than what you may think. And there are several reasons for it. Uh, technology is one of them. I mean, nowadays it's so hard to have a face-to-face -face conversation. Most of the times, all oh, communications happen via text message, via emails, uh, rarely uh, a phone call. Uh, how many times have you heard this? I'm, I'm too busy, just text me. And I get to it when I get to it. These are people who you are wanting to create a community and yet they don't have time to give you that five minutes. And if you can't give me that five minutes, you know, uh, how can I count on you to be part of my community? Those are questions that you should be thinking about it because if you don't have the time to have that face-to-face -face right now that we can cultivate that that friendship, then there's no point of you being part of the community. Really, there isn't. If it's better just to text or to have that uh, wall on, honestly, that is not going to benefit the community. At least that is my opinion. Uh, other things are busy lifestyles. Uh, for some reason, everybody's always running from nowhere to get to nowhere. I see this all the time. People are racing. Uh, they leave work at 5 and they are speeding. If the speed limit is 55, they go 65. Because that busy lifestyle, you can only maintain it for so long. And that busy lifestyle is going to limit the community interaction. Meaning that if you're always busy because you're always working, because you are always on the go, there's no way that you can be part of a community. You're just not there. Because of your lifestyle demands that you are working 24-7 or you are interacting with other things that is not your community, specifically your prepper community. So that should be an indicator too that maybe that person is not the right fit for the community. Now, uh, like I said before, a lot of people have um, had the need for speed uh, in and one of the things is, that if you remember, back in the old days, uh, we all worked nearby. The rule of thumb was you have to work within three to five miles. No more, no more than that because, you know, it was more convenient and whatnot. Nowadays, people have a lot of high mobility, meaning that some people actually work 20, 30, up to 50 miles away. I know folks in Florida actually travel up to 80 miles up to 80 miles. That's an hour, an hour and a half easy of travel time. What are you what are you doing? I mean, essentially you spend 3 hours on the road every single day. And, and again, it's time away from the community. So, high mobility has become a, a thing too. People travel longer and longer distance nowadays and they get more and more frustrated. That's that's just the way it is. People also have a digital overload. How many times have you walked around on the, on the stores? And I'm just going to mention stores because that is probably a one place that a lot of folks do visit, the stores to get uh, food and whatnot or clothes or whatever. And how many times you see people just on their phone? They do not move from that phone. It's like they are hypnotized on that phone. They are relying on constant communication and constant, constant information flowing in all the time because they can't have a moment without that phone. It has become an addiction. People may deny it and people can deny all they want. It is an addiction. That digital overload is an addiction. People don't know how to let go of their phones. They really don't. And that is detrimental because the day that that phone is taken away, they're going to have withdrawals. And then what? So when you have people like that so addicted to the digital devices, why do you need them in your group, in your community? You have other folks that are constantly pressured uh, by the economic circumstances, meaning that, oh, I, I need to make more money because uh, 
you know, uh, such and such has that car, and I, and I need that car too because I got to keep up with the Johnsons. This is very uh, visible in the proper community. My thing is you have to do what's right for you. I always have advocated by do, you do you and forget about everything else. Just because I show you something does not mean that you need to get it. But people sometimes feel that um, economic pressure. I have to be the same as that person that I'm seeing or I have to mimic whatever they're doing or if I don't have it, then my neighbors are going to think less of me. Nobody well, nobody cares. cares. You need to do you. Because if you go into a group and you try to um, overshine every single person in the group, there's no point in having you. You are not being a team player. Because if all you think is about being up here and not being part of the team, then essentially you are not servicing the purpose of a community. Really, you're really not. So the economic pressures of some people, they put on themselves. Uh, honestly, I really don't think there's a need for it, but a lot of people do think so. But when you have that, essentially you don't have time because all you do is work, work, work to achieve a point that you really don't need. So why do I want you in, that, in my community when all you're gonna do is not to make the community better, but to make yourself look better? You see what I'm saying? Now, there also is the social fragmentation due to urbanization. I mean this, cities. Uh, too many cities have been created. Uh, people live on top of each other, honestly. Um, I remember living in Miami uh, when Mrs. D and I first got married. Uh, my job was in Miami, actually, and that's why we stayed there for a little bit. And I didn't even know my neighbor. I say hi every day, but I didn't have the the conversation with my neighbors because it was so urbanized and everybody was always on the go. And although people live closer than ever together, nobody knows anybody. There was, there's no communities in, in cities. People may argue, oh, there is a community. There is a community. No, there is not. I am sorry to say this, but they will talk to you because they want to be polite. But I guarantee you, most people we living in cities, they hate each other. There you go. I said it. And with that, I will end it like this. There is a lot of trust issues nowadays. Based on everything that I have said and the fact that people um, have issues with political divisions, with um, community members, uh, with they don't they don't talk to each other. Everything is text. You can't gauge anybody through text message or to a Facebook post or a YouTube video. You just can. You have to talk to that person face to face. Have that conversation. See how that person moves, see how that person act. You cannot trust anybody that you do not know. And in fact, I will venture to say, if you don't talk to that person often, face to face, and all you have is a communication via text, the trust actually diminishes quite a bit. Even if you know that person for a long time, it does diminish because people change. People change in it by you just having a, a written text. You can't gauge the changes you just can't and when that person will come and, and speak to you in person and you see that message change that it's not what it used to be then you're gonna say well i can't trust you no more you're not what you used to be well that person has been changing you have been changing as well but you guys have not had not been able to adapt because they had not been that closeness you see what i'm saying there is an old saying uh, in, 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 in my country. Uh, you can be a father, but if you don't spend time with your child, you are nothing more than a DNA donor, if that makes any sense. So no time spent, meaning that there's no way to create a community. Uh, technology. Technology has be uh, has done an impact on people, busy lifestyles, high mobility have done a, 
you know, an impact on people, digital overload, economic pressures, social fragmentations, and trust issues. Those are things that you have to really look into if you're planning to create a community. A community is not easy to create. A community is not easy to become part of. It is not. So when you talk about prepper communities, most people are just blowing smoke and they are pretending to, to know what they're talking, but they don't really go into what it really takes to have a community. Think about how many good friends you have, how many best friends you have. How many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many? That should be your answer. Your community needs to be your best friends. And if you can't have it, unfortunately, you're going to end up being a long wolf. And unfortunately, in my opinion, long wolves don't last too long. That being said, I hope you have a great one. Like I was rock on, rip on, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.